Lesson 2-4, adding integers. By the end of this lesson, you're going to be able to add integers with the same sign, and you're also going to be able to add integers with different signs. We have two vocabulary words today, opposites and additive inverse, and I'm going to go over those two vocabulary words right now. We know that 5 is one integer, and its opposite is negative 5. Both of these numbers are an equal distance from zero on a number line. So if you were to graph them on a number line, like this, and zero's here, negative five will be here, and five will be over here. They're both an equal distance or an equal value away from zero. Numbers that are opposites, like five and negative five, are also known as the additive inverse. So these two words are actually very similar to each other. Opposites is a more general term, whereas additive inverse is very specific to math. Opposites we can also think of in the world outside of math, like, um, for example, left and right are opposites, up and down are opposites, just like 5 and negative 5 are opposites. So let's start by adding integers that have the same sign. So in other words, in this first example here, the both of these integers are negative. We have negative three plus negative two. When you see two integers that you're gonna to add together that have the same sign, there aren't any new or special rules for this. This is the same way that you add two numbers that will both be positive. For example, if you had three plus two, oops, I didn't mean to write five. If you had three plus two, the answer would be five. You wouldn't even think about it. You'd go, get right to the answer five. And that's the same thing that we have here. Negative three plus negative two is going to be negative five. Let me show you a couple different uh, reasons why. Here's the first way I'm gonna explain it to you. If I had these negative signs, the way I would represent negative three would be with three negative signs. And if I were to represent negative two as negative signs, I would draw two of them. So in all, how many negative signs do we have there? We just count them up. One, two, three, four, five. We have five negative signs. Another way to think about it is with a number line. So if I had a number line here, and it goes in both directions, and I'm gonna start, here's zero, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, and negative five. If I start at negative three on my number line, and then I add to it two more negatives, in other words, I move two more spots in the negative direction, I get one, two. Look, I end up at negative five. So that's two different ways to think about it when we're working with adding integers that have the same sign. You can either simply just know that when they're both negative, you just add them together and put a negative sign in front of them. You can also draw out how many negative signs there would be, or you can draw out a number line if that helps you. Let's take a look at this example over here. Negative five plus negative seven. Well, we know since we're adding together two negative integers, our answer is going to be negative. And now you just need to know what is five plus seven. Well, five plus seven is 12. So the answer is negative 12. You could also draw out the, um, we could also draw it out like we did over here. So that would be, I would start by drawing five negative signs. And I draw seven negative signs. And then you can count them up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Negative 12. You can also draw out a number line. I'm going to start here at negative 5. And then I'm going to move in the negative direction seven more spots. So here I'm at negative 5. It's going to be negative 6, negative 7, negative 8, negative 9, negative 10 negative 11, negative 12. Let's see if I move the right number of spots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And as I said, 
that spot right there is negative 12. So that's how we add integers that have the same sign. It's kind of simple. Now let's focus on adding integers that have different signs. There's, there's two little rules here that sometimes help us. We are going to know that the sum is positive if the positive integer's absolute value is greater. And we're going to know that the sum is going to be negative if the negative integer's absolute value is greater. Let's try to put this into practice. So if I take a look at this example right here, 5 plus negative 3, the thing that you need to do is start by finding the absolute value of these two numbers. So the absolute value of 5 is 5, and the absolute value of negative 3 is 3. That means that since the, the, um, the positive integer has the greater value right here, the positive integer, its absolute value is greater, that means I know my answer is going to be positive. And then all you're going to do is you're going to subtract the absolute value. You're going to find the differences. What's the difference between 5 and negative 3? The difference between those two is negative. Is, sorry, not negative. The difference between those two is 2. So my answer is going to be positive 2. Let me show you another way to think about it. Again, with those um, little drawings representing positive and negative. So we have positive 5. So if I were to draw out five positives, here I go, one, two, three, four, five. And if I were to draw out three negatives, one, two, three. Now what you do is you partner them up. You partner up the positives and the negatives together. Those, since they all have partners, they're gone. And look what we're left with, two positives. Isn't that what we got right here? I'm also going to show it to you on a number line. If this is 0 here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Here I'm at 5. And I'm going to add to it 3 negatives. So if I'm going to add 3 negatives, that means I'm going to go in the left-hand direction. And I'm going to move 3 spots. Here I go. 1, 2, 3. And look where you end up. We end up right here at positive 2. So again, there's three different ways to look at it. We can either try to apply this rule of finding the absolute value, and whichever one's absolute value is bigger, that tells you if it's going to be positive or negative. You can draw out the little plus and minus signs, or you could draw out a number line. I would suggest to start trying drawing out the positive and negatives or start drawing out a number line and as you get more comfortable with it, you'll be able to understand a little bit more how this rule works and you won't always have to draw this stuff out. Let's try this example over here, negative 3 plus 2. So if I find the absolute value of these two numbers, negative 3 and positive 2, the absolute value of negative 3 is 3. I'll write that down. And the absolute value of 2 is 2. Now which one of those is bigger, 3 or 2? 3 has a greater value. So that means because the 3 is bigger, the absolute value of, of negative 3 is bigger, I know my answer is going to be negative. And now you just have to find the difference between these two. What's the difference between 3 and 2? 1. So the answer is going to be negative 1. And again, I'll draw it out for you. So the way that we're going to represent negative 3 it was with three negative signs and the way that you're going to represent positive 2 is with two positive signs and you partner them up and the ones that have partners are gone and the ones that are left over tells us the answer we have one negative sign left over so that means the answer is negative 1 also on a number line let's say that negative 3 is here And if I'm going to start at negative 3, I'm going to move over in the positive 2 direction. Positive 2 is to the right. So I'm going to move over two spots. 1, 2. And right here, this is going to be negative 2. Right here, this is going to be negative 1. So our answer is going to be negative 1.
So there's three ways for you to work through these when we have when we're adding integers that have different signs. You can either find their absolute value and the integer with the greater absolute value is going to tell you if it's going to be positive or negative and then you're going to subtract the absolute value to find out the number. You can draw out your positive and negative signs or you can draw out a number line. Getting, go getting comfortable with adding integers is really important for being able to subtract integers. So practice on getting good at adding integers and you'll be really great and ready to work on subtracting integers.